Hey guys, Adam Ottinger here with ProductiveGamer.com. Today we're going to be looking at how to get started and just some beginning tips for Elder Scrolls Online. Now, I'm playing the PlayStation 4 edition, so it may be a tad bit different looking, but overall the, the same game across all platforms. So, very first thing you're going to come across is character creation. So, you may be asking a lot of questions as to um, how important is this getting started off and there's there's several different important factors here we'll go through them real quick so on the alliance piece of it selecting an alliance the only major deciding factor on alliance is pvp all three alliances they're fighting each other in a battle royale as far as pvp goes so if you have friends that you may want to pvp with um, you'll need to make sure you're on the same alliance outside of that Different alliances can group together to run dungeons and, and different stuff like that. So that's the biggest piece about alliance is really just your PvP. If you want to make sure your friends can PvP together. The next second most important thing is going to be your race. Race Races have a lot of different racial backgrounds, uh, uh, passives, different things like that that they will give you bonuses to. So... You know, just kind of pick something that reflects what it is you're trying to be, whether it be a tank, a healer, or a damage dealer. Now, I know with a lot of games, they've kind of gotten away from classes and, and the significance of having a damage dealer versus a tank versus a healer. It's not the case in Elder Scrolls. You definitely have to have, if you're going to be running more of the group content or even the in-game content you're going to need tanks you're going to need healers and you're going to need your damage dealers so you know, your dps classes so just pick something as far as your race goes it's not as big of a deal as your class so this is your bread and butter right here now with I want to start out by saying that any class people can make good arguments that any class can be any type of role so if you're a Dragonite I've heard Dragonite healers you would think usually your sorcerer would probably be the best um, where I find actually the easiest it's been for me is the Templar so just give you a quick background the Dragonite tends to be your best tank once again a lot of room for argument here this is just what I've seen and what's worked best for me and, and the group of folks that I've been running with so the Dragonite tends to be your best tank you can get a Templar tank that's pretty good as well. Uh, Sorcerer, you can use that as a healer, but the best healer I've found so far, especially early on, has been the Templar. The Templar is going to come with a whole set of healing abilities. And the way abilities works, just a quick background, um, your abilities, you can equip weapons and that will give you a whole slot of skills so you can equip a healing staff for instance and get a whole set of healing spells but the only class in the game that gets its own specific set of healing spells that comes built in with the class is the Templar and those healing spells are very nice to have and has made life a lot easier for me as I've healed with both classes so as far as damage dealers all of them are viable damage dealers you can really pick any one to be damage dealer, so don't worry too much about your class selection. The Night Blade's going to be more of your stealth. Um, people have made the the argument that it is the best DPS class in the game, but really, all of them are really, really great at DPS. And so, the class is going to be your biggest factor here, making sure you just pick the right class that suits you. So outside of that, once you get all this locked in, we'll head off into the world. All right, one of the first decisions you'll probably end up having to make once you get out and about, run through the first little prison section there, the kind of tutorial area, you will have to decide which direction you're going to take your character as far as development goes, leveling them up. So three main attribute points every time you level up, you'll get a point to apply to any one of these. So you have Magicka, Health, and Stamina. Now all three of these will increase I mean, magic will increase your magic bar. Health's going to increase how much HP you have, therefore how long you can live or how much damage you can take. And stamina is based on how much you can roll, dodge, bash, different things like that. And uh, some, certain abilities take stamina and magicka to actually cast. So obviously the bigger the bar you have in there, the more abilities you're going to be able to use, the quicker you're going to be able to 
dodge, the more times you can, you know, cast spells, all that good stuff. So, outside of just increasing the bar, Magicka also increases staff weapon damage, health also increases your health recovery, how much you how quick you're going to regain health during combat and outside of combat, and then stamina is going to increase damage for shields, swords, axes, maces, bows, and daggers. So, those are your three main abilities. You can kind of plug them in however you want. Health's always a good one, but as you get to develop your character and get into your high end, you're going to want to make sure you're really putting the points where they matter. So, uh, after doing that, it's going to lock you in on those abilities. So, uh, then you will get ability points to apply towards your skills. So, after your three main attributes, you come into your individual skills. You'll notice your class here now I'm a Templar so I have you'll get every class comes with three different skill trees to go down so they have their own unique skill trees here and then you'll notice outside of that whatever weapon you equip you'll get that skill tree as you start to use that weapon and level up that weapon individually same thing with armor you can see light armor, medium armor, and heavy armor have their own sets of skills. I can come in here to heavy armor. You can see the different stats you can get. Most, most of your armor has a lot of passive abilities. So like in this case, resolve. Each time I level this ability up, it's going to increase my armor for each piece of heavy armor equipped. So you generally want to have the same kind of armor whichever route you decide to go. So that way you are able to multiply those passive abilities. So then you have racial abilities. So this is once again where you create your race. You can come in here and you have your passive abilities for it. And then crafting. So you can pick a craft. You can do all the crafts, just a few of the crafts, whatever be the case. But that is going to be your main Decisions you're gonna to have to make early on trying to figure out which direction to go as you level your character as you develop it The next thing you're wanting to look at is the map you're the awake. the world kind of how to get around in it So a lot of RPGs they force you to talk to every character out here and It becomes quite a headache to try and figure out who really actually needs something from you like a quest or you know who, who actually offers rewards you know, because you have to talk to every single character, you know, maybe 30 characters in a town. Well, Elder Scrolls takes all that guesswork out. On my compass across the top here, you can see black arrows as I move around. So, for instance, I've got this guy. He's got a black arrow over his head. And as most RPGs have made it a lot more simple to just run to where you need to, if you're trying to burn through the story or level up faster, you don't have to worry about talking with everybody. You can literally just go to the characters of most importance that will have something for you to do so looking at my compass i've got this guy right here he's going to be one of my objectives now black arrows are quests that may be available that you haven't picked up yet or maybe quests that you're currently on so if i hit my map here i can select let's see if i scroll out So as you can see, I actually don't have any quests currently. So this is just telling me this guy, Captain Tremoli, if I pronounce that right, Mole, 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 uh, he will have something for me to do. So let me chat with him real quick. He was headed to Eagle. Burn through that real quick. All right, so started, storm on the horizon. Now, if I pull up my map, I should have something. So there we go. I've got storm on the horizon right there. It's gonna tell me where to go on my map. It's also in white, so if I come out here and look at my compass, you can see now I've got it on there. So I'll know to go straight towards it. So you're probably wondering, okay, well, why do I have this black one still over here? Once again, that's going to be a character who has something for me to do. There's another, see, as you walk around, see, I just had another one pop up right in front of me. So we'll actually go talk to this person, and I'll show you we'll end up having a second quest. So, going toward the black so arrow, visitors, a little time. watch Captain Astania. These people have some tough Ideas. names. Here we go. Oh, so good. if I select it, well, we'll kind of run through that. All right, so you can see I've started yet another quest line. Now if I pull up my map, ensuring security is the other quest I started. It is now right here on my map. So you can see in the top right-hand corner, insert ensuring security. 
I can select that as my active. It now becomes the white arrow on my map if I was to go in that direction. And you can still see I still have Storm on the Horizon over here that I can select again as active. And this will still stay a black arrow for me. So I can work on making sure I'm completing quests that are kind of in the same area that aren't stretched all the way across the map. So you'll find as you go out and about to level, the easiest way to level is just to go wandering around. These black arrows will pop up, not on your map, but as you run across them, as we saw there, um, the black arrows will pop up on your compass across the top. And you just go to them, talk to those people, and you'll be able to get those active quests and start completing them. That's how you're gonna gain most of your experience. One thing to mention while you're out and about questing, if you run across backpacks, make sure to search those. They generally have a little better loot in them. Also, treasure boxes will randomly spawn, so if you have lock picks and the skill to do it, and when I say skill, it's literally like a mini game. You don't actually have to get a higher skill to do it. You just have to be fast and accurate with it, making sure to unlock the treasure box in a specific amount of time without breaking all your lock picks and it'll allow you to get gain loot as well. So you'll notice as we're out and about, I you know, just out exploring. Once again, probably the easiest way to level up. I run across this person here. She needs some help. I chat with her. Once again it's a black arrow. Once I chat with her, she's giving me something to do which is over into this town. Now as you start to get out and about and explore you'll find different um, legends which you can select here and it'll give you a quick breakdown of kind of all the different uh, items on your mini map what they do so you can see group boss is a uh, pretty fun one there the skull with the two swords um, when you run across that you'll be fighting a hard boss but it'll give you a lot of good loot and a lot of times there's people standing there nearby waiting for the either the boss to spawn or other players to show up so you can utilize each other work together as a team and just as long as you participate in the battle, you'll end up getting the loot. You'll be able to loot the boss. Um, as you complete things, you'll notice currently on my map, they're blacked out. But as you complete the different, whatever it may be, objectives that you have to do um, with each different type of icon, they will be filled in with white. In other words, like I've got a way shrine here, which I'm about to explain to you. But this way shrine I've discovered, and now it's white. So... It means that I've completed what I need to do with that and there's really nothing else for me to do with it. So as you complete group bosses, um, you know, the dark anchors up there, the little saw blade looking thing, um, that's just an area you can go where a bunch of monsters spawn, kind of a group objective. You'll find other players hanging out nearby waiting for the event to start. And once you, uh, I think you got to combat several different waves of enemies. Once you kill all of them, a treasure chest will spawn, giving you pretty good loot as well. And you'll see that those things will start out black, hollowed out. But as you um, complete them, they will fill in with white. And that just means that you have done it and you don't need to go back there or do anything else with it. So, Way Shrines. I'm going to explain how to move around in the world faster. Way shrines are your best friends. Way shrines are like your checkpoints. So you can see I've got a way shrine on my map here. Way shrines will allow me to travel, fast travel, to any other way shrine that I've unlocked. Also, if you die and you don't have a soul stone charge, which I'll explain in a minute, way shrines are basically going to be your checkpoint. It's going to spawn you to the nearest way shrine. So if I won't run to this way shrine, once again, you're going to see it's black on my compass there. And it's also black on my map. But as I get to it, I will have discovered it. And it is now white. So nothing else I need to do here. Now you can also teleport or travel to any way shrine from anywhere. You don't have to be near a way shrine, but it does cost money. So you can see in the top right that it cost me 38 gold to travel to. But if I use another way shrine, I can travel to any other way shrine for free. See how that now there's no longer cost. So save you a little bit of money. Of course, if you're out and about and you're pretty far away from one, sometimes it's worth just spending the money. Early on, you'll kind of need the money more so than you do later. And it becomes kind of more inexpensive later as you start making more money per um, different things you do. 
versus the cost of actually um, using the way shrine. But early on, it's definitely key to find your way shrine to teleport between each other. So just a fast way to travel and a good thing to pick up anytime you see one on your map. So in combat, make sure that you're getting out of the red stuff that just appeared there. That's going to be your difference between battles, um, whether you win or lose a lot of times, especially during bosses or unique characters. They'll have certain abilities or whatever that they may use that literally you'll have to dodge, and that could be the only way you have to beat them. Make sure that you're you know, blocking when you need to, using your heavy attacks when given the chance. You gotta knock people on the ground, giving you a little more time to do what you gotta do. All right, one of the biggest struggles in Elder Scrolls Online that's been for me so far at least is inventory. Making sure that you don't max out your inventory. Now, I just started this character, so I currently have two of 60 capacity, have plenty of inventory space, but you'll find out as you get out and about adventuring that you will fill up your inventory very quickly. One of the best things in this game that will help you with that is your bank. Now, if you look on the map here, your bank is going to look like that treasure chest right there. And I'm actually right here at them. So I can come talk to my banker. And there's a guild bank as you join a guild who might have that to offer. But right now you're looking at your individual bank. And when I come over here, you're going to see I actually have stuff already in it. Because all of your items in your bank is shared between all your characters. And then my bank capacity is actually at 89 of 90. So it's pretty full as it stands. But I can dump stuff off into the bank freeing up my inventory you know next option will be to sell stuff out of your inventory a lot of challenges come with crafting supplies I mean you will just fill up your inventory with just a ton of crafting supplies so you can see that's what I've got mostly there when it comes to crafting the other good thing about banks is that the game will know that you it will use whatever you have stored in your bank for your crafting so you don't have to run to the bank withdraw ingredients or items you may need to craft it will just consider them already in the bank and will use them straight out of the bank it'll withdraw them for you so that is definitely another plus to using your bank makes life a lot easier now if i wanted to buy more bank space or bag space then i can do that you can see currently i can buy more bank space for 11,400. that'll give me 10 more slots if i come right here you can see there I've got the black bag pack there and that is a bag vendor so if I talk with him I can buy a backpack upgrade and it will the cost of it will continue to go up as you buy bag upgrades but if I was to spend 400 gold I could increase my capacity by 10 and after that it jumps up to around I think a thousand gold and then it's just gonna keep going up from there getting more expensive to increase your capacity overall but another thing to keep in mind with abilities you can assign them as you if they're active abilities there's a lot of passive abilities that obviously do passive um, benefits for you but as far as active abilities go you have all your hot bars right here and you can come in and literally select any hot bar um, any hotkey rather and you can change it um, to whatever active abilities you have unlocked so I can come in here move assign any of these to my square button so just make sure to always assign them make sure that you got them on your hotbar the way to level up abilities is by having them on the hotbar you don't necessarily have to use them but if you have them on your hotbar up here then it will get experience and what do I mean by leveling up abilities so if I come down here to destruction staff if I look at this wall of elements here, it is leveled up three times just by having it on my hotbar. So you can see right below the name of wall of elements, it has a experience bar. And that's just telling me obviously that I've been using it and it's leveling up. Once an ability gets to level five, and it's actually level four, but maxed all the way out. You can see right here on wall of elements is level three. If I come up to this destructive touch, I've got a little symbol out beside it and I have the option now in the bottom left hand corner to morph it. So once you get that option, once you get it to level five, like I said, it still technically shows level four, but I've maxed it all the way out and would be a level five. I can morph it over to 
another it gives it another type of benefit so another great thing about Elder Scrolls Online you can have some of the same abilities but they may have different effects depending on which route you decide to go so for instance if I click on morph here destructive touch right now it uh, devastates an enemy um, with a charge for my staff dealing 730 magic damage and 935 magic damage more over eight seconds now if I click the morph ability this will um, like the new effect there so this will add an additional elemental effect right so or I can do destructive reach which has increased range so I'll be able to cast it from a different um, from a further range so you can see how morphing abilities are definitely key you want to make sure you can morph them as much as you can and it will only continue to give you more options you can go with so make sure to keep morphing them to level them up now let's talk about ultimate ability so as you make your way through the different trees you unlock your ultimate abilities which will be right across the top here so you can see here that's categorized as my ultimate ability there the radial sweep if i come in here i've got dawn's wrath has you know nova as its ultimate ability so you can kind of read those so ultimate ability as you do different things use different abilities it will start to level up you can see in my bottom right hand corner see how we're flashing right now that's my ultimate ability so that's l1 r1 if i press them together it's going to use it right here oh there we go and you can see it depletes now as i start to cast and do different things you're going to see that bar go back up and as it charges once it makes a complete square it will be charged ready to rock and roll again giving me the opportunity to use it again so make sure to use your ultimate ability as often as it becomes available as it does become available pretty fast but it can definitely be a game changer in any battle all right so let's talk about soul gems for a second soul gems is going to be what allows you to respawn in your current area versus at a way shrine if you were to die well, I'll show you an example of that here in just a second. But first of all, you got to know where to buy soul gems. Now, soul gems also recharge weapons, which will be for a later video. Um, weapons will have enchantments on there that will allow you to do, you know, 20 additional damage or something like that. Well, those have charges to them. And the more you use the weapon, it will deplete that charge. And soul gems will allow you to recharge it. But one of its biggest things will, is allowing you to respawn at the current area you're at rather than running all the way back to a way shrine um, or spawning back in a way shrine and running all the way back to where you just were. It also allows you to resurrect other players, assuming it's within the appropriate level. So I'll kind of show you what that looks like. But if you come over to a mage's guild, you're looking for a mystic within the mage's guild. And you can see right below this guy's name, he is a mystic. Now there's mystics also outside of the mages guilds, um, different type vendors that are throughout the world, but uh, the easiest place to find them right out the gates is within the uh, mages guild. So as I come to him, I can purchase, you can see there are all kind of soul gems we can purchase. But if, I, if you look at the description of it over there, that one's used to capture a level 30 to 39 soul. And basically what this means is you're wanting to purchase one that meets whatever level you're at so you know if you're level one through nine this is the soul gem you want just a petty soul soul gem real cheap if you're looking to upgrade an item level that item level also needs to be you know one through nine for it to be effective but we're we're talking just respawning or if you were to try and resurrect a friend right now i could pick up this soul gem and if i was level one through nine i could use it to respawn assuming the soul gem was full or empty and i'll show you the difference between that but basically i've got a petty soul gem right here that is empty i can buy one that is full but you can see the price jumps from 21 gold to 270 gold which is a big difference and you actually have a free ability allowing you to charge soul gems and we will pull up that here in a second so for now let's grab we're just going to grab this empty soul gem so early on in the game for the first handful of levels you'll be able to revive anywhere you want to but after i think it's level five you that option will be taken away and as you can see here so i've just died and to the left there if i had a full soul gem a charged soul gem rather i can 
press the X button to respawn here. Unfortunately, I do not, and I have to press um, the square button for me on the PS4 to revive at the uh, way shrine. All right. So if I do this, then I have to respawn all the way back at the way, sh way shrine. And then I have to run all the way back to wherever it is that I might have died. And I think in this case, I died somewhere over here. So you can see I've got a long uh, hike back ahead of me. Now, if we were to have a charged soul gem, and you can see that by the after we purchased them. So see, I, I went ahead and picked up two of them. But you can see there, both of them were empty. So I was not able to respawn there. All right, to charge a soul gem, we every class comes with an ability, a skill rather. If we come down here, a skill tree called Soul Magic. So if you click on Soul Magic, you will have Soul Trapped. It probably doesn't look like it's that level, but um, you'll have Soul Trap. And if you read the description there, it's just going to lay claim to enemy souls dealing x amount of magic damage to the target and one other nearby enemy seconds and yours may not read exactly like this is this has been morphed one time so um has been improved but if you see there at the bottom most important part feels a soul gem if an affected enemy dies so if we assign this to our ability hot bar which i have under r1 and we come over here and we find us somebody to defeat once again had two empty soul gems oh I'm gonna drop that guy pretty quick. Let's kill this guy right here. All right. So first of all, I'm gonna put the um, soul gem. I'm gonna uh, cast a spell on him. And all you have to do is kill him within. I think it's 10 seconds. But if you see there in the top left, you I uh, have received a soul gem. So if I come to my inventory supplies, you can see now I still have. Once again, I had two empty soul gems. But now you can see I only have one empty and one full. So. If I come over here and die, let's see. Alright, so you can see here, I've died and I had my charged soul gem, so now I can revive here. Just as simple as that. So make sure to scoop up soul gems. They are the key to leveling a lot faster, especially as you level up a little higher, um, where dying might become a little more frequent, but it'll allow you to spawn in this area. Now, I did use it, so it did deplete that soul gem. And so... Now I've got to work on charging another one. Once you hit level 10, another great feature, just kind of bringing the MMORPG feel to it, which is one of my favorite features. You can come down to your social bar and you will have unlocked, if you come to group, you will have unlocked the group finder. Now I'm level 23, I think, with this character, so some of these dungeons may not be open to you yet. But you can come over here and select any dungeon that is unlocked to you. You can select it there and hit the, in my case for PS4, yours may be different depending on what you're playing it on. But you hit the join queue and it will queue you up, allowing you to join up with three other players and run through that dungeon together. Um, also, you want to make sure to select your role. So if I come over here to... Group Finder. I can select which role I want to be um, queued as, so I can be damage, healer, or tank. Now it just it just found us three other members, and it's going to give me the option to travel there immediately if I want to, and I can go ahead and go. All right, so you can see we've joined a group here, and. Got me paired with three other people, and this is the most fun aspect, in my opinion, of MMORPGs, is the ability to run together as a group, fight tougher, challenging bosses, and ultimately giving you the better, giving you an uh, opportunity to loot those bosses for um, higher quality loot, more rare loot than uh, you would have probably gotten running around questing. Alright guys, so just some beginner tips and tricks here. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, please hit the like button below. If you want to subscribe for some more videos, some more action coming your way, then uh, please do so. And uh, leave me a comment below if there's something you guys would like to see, something you want me to shoot, some tips, tricks, whatever be the case. Just leave me a comment below and I'll work on getting to it. Thank you guys once again. Adam Ottinger with ProductiveGamer.com